Let's take a look at some real world examples of the button actions. So we'll go into our gallery and we'll pull a button onto our stage here. I'm going to align that with our stage. Now I'm going to duplicate it and this one I'm going to size down and I'm actually going to size the text down by clicking here in my properties panel and I'm going to press control D to duplicate this button. Okay, So now we've got a couple buttons down here and one up on top. So I'm going to just straighten these out with each other. And I'll take this one and move it down a bit. Okay. Now on this little button here in the lower left, let's go ahead in the properties pane and name it Apple. And let's change the text on it to say Apple. Okay. And we'll do the same thing with the next one except with the word orange. So we'll name it orange. And then we'll change the text to say orange. Now we'll take our big button here and we'll take the text right off it by clicking in the text area and just deleting it and we'll name it fruit. Okay, so you guys can probably see what I'm leading up to here. What we're going to do is attach a couple actions down here to change the text on this button. So we'll start off with the button set text action. So let's go ahead and double click our Apple button now and in the button properties area here we'll, we'll choose the actions panel and we'll choose the on click tab from the actions panel and that's going to give us basically whatever we attach here is going to occur when that button gets clicked so let's use the button or the action wizard so we'll click on add action and from the choose a category pull down menu we'll choose button and this shows us again just the actions for the button object Okay, so we'll choose from this list button set text and you can double click it or you can select it and click the next button I'm going to double click it and then I'm going to choose from this pull down menu in the object name area here fruit as you can see here our buttons are easily identifiable at a glance because we named them relevant so that harkens back to what we talked about earlier okay in the text area here and you're going to want to make sure this is in quotation since it's not a variable it's a string we're going to type apple okay so we're going to set text of the button named fruit to apple let's put, press finish now and you'll see we've got our action added to our action editor by our wizard okay so when we click on this button it's going to set the text of the button named fruit to apple now let's click behind the word here somewhere so left click on your action editor and drag to select your text the same way you would in any text editor or HTML editor and then right click on it and choose copy so now we can just paste this action onto our orange button and change the apple text to say orange this is a real time saver and you'll find that you're, you're going to want to get used to doing things this way right away so go ahead and press OK and then double click on your orange button and select the actions panel from the properties dialog and in the on click tab right click in there and select paste and you'll see that the action that we had in our clipboard comes right on there now all we have to do is change the area here with, that says apple so it says orange so again we're setting the button named fruit uh, we're setting the text to say orange okay so press OK and we've got our action set up and go ahead and press F5 to preview our project and when we press on the Apple button you'll see that the text Apple appears on this button and when we press on the orange button it turns to orange okay so this is a very simple example but it demonstrates the button set text action quite well alright now what we're going to do is take this particular demonstration to the next level and we're going to close down our project and we're going to add another button now so we'll go into our gallery and let's take something that looks a little bit different so for example how about a purple pill so we can distinguish it from the other ones we're just going to size it down a little bit okay and I will take the text down a little bit there we go and we're basically ready to go so I'm going to center that onto my page and this is going to demonstrate the get text action okay in addition to the set text action so let's call this one display so I'm going to rename it and I'm going to take the text right off it okay you don't have to do that strictly speaking but I'm going to do it for the purposes of this demo I'm going to move my two buttons here just for visual reference down a little bit okay now my display button I'm going to double click on it and we're going to add a couple actions to it so let's go into our actions panel again and in our on click tab we'll select add action 
and what we're going to do now is we're going to get text. So this is the corresponding action to set text, okay? So we're going to go button, get text, I'm going to double click on that, and from the object name area here, I'm going to choose display, or sorry, fruit. We're going to get the text from the fruit button, and we're going to store that in a result variable named result. Okay, so I'm going to just copy that to my clipboard. Okay, so what we've got is a action which gets the text from the button object named fruit and stores it in a variable named result. So press finish. And now all we have to do is set the text of our display button to show us that value. So I'm going to add an action again, and I'm going to go button, set text. I'm going to press next and I'm going to choose display from our object name pull down menu and in the text area with no quotes around it and this is very important because now we're using a variable as opposed to just a string value and we're going to type result okay because that's what the uh, variable name is that we stored that uh, value in okay so press finish then press OK and go ahead and preview your project now and basically what that extra purple button does now is it gets the text and it sets its own text to be whatever the text of this large button is. So it's using two actions, one to get the text from this big button and one to set its own text to match that. If we click on it now, you'll notice nothing changes because there's no text on the big button. But if we click on one of our bottom buttons first, for example Apple, and now click on the purple button, you'll see it changes to Apple. If we change the big button's text to orange, then when we click on the purple button, again it says orange. So this is a pretty basic way of demonstrating how to use the get text and set text actions and hopefully it, it uh, sort of opens your, your um, you up a little bit to the rest of the actions hopefully this is kind of like an aha moment where, where you see that how these things relate so um, we're gonna move on and take a look at a couple other actions here now we may as well just use our same demo page that we have laid out here and uh, actually adapt it to do a couple other things now why don't we go ahead on our Apple button and we will add an action here that's going to make our purple button disappear and on our orange button we will add an action to make it reappear okay so we'll go on to our apple button double click it now we want to click in this empty line number two so that we're adding an action after the button set text action okay and we're going to go to add action and we're going to go to button set visible double click on that and then choose from the object name pull down display and set the visibility to false okay so we're in other words we're going to take our display button and we're going to make it disappear okay press on finish and now we've added that action to our actions editor now we're actually going to click and drag again to select that action right click and copy so that we can paste that onto our orange button again without having to use the action wizard again so we'll press ok and then we'll double click on our orange button here we're going to click at the end of the line, press the enter key, and then paste it in using control V as a shortcut. You could also have pasted it using a right click paste. Okay? So we've got now a button set visible display action on our orange button, but we want to change the value where it says false to true. So I'm going to manually go in and type that. And this is going to make that button reappear. So let's press OK and press F5 to preview our project. So now we've added the button set visibility. Um, action to our demonstration and when we click on the Apple button you notice the purple button disappears When we click on the orange button it reappears and this is of course independent from its own action which is to retrieve the text in this case orange now if we make it disappear and reappear you see the orange text retains um, its value there on the purple button okay so that's one example of how to use the set visibility action and additionally we've also um, taken a look at how to get text and set text I'm just going to double click so we can go back into our button actions here for reference additionally as you can see we've got a, a wide variety of other actions in here let's take a look at a couple more before we move on but basically um, suffice to say um, that you can apply the same methods that you use to apply one action to any of the other actions so basically you come in here you select the action you want you double click it you set a couple parameters press OK and you're ready to go uh, a lot of our users and you probably as well will want to type in the actions manually as you get a little more advanced but for now we're just using the action wizard so that we don't detract from the actual um, curriculum that we're trying to outline here which is the button actions okay so let's go ahead and try the get enabled or sorry the set enabled action here 
So we've got our, our Apple button um, selected here. And if I back out of here by pressing cancel, you can see we're on our Apple button and it's up here on the top. And we're on the last line, so we're adding a um, action after our set visible action. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a I'm going to use the add button here, add action button, to activate this uh, action wizard. And I'm going to use a button set enabled action. So I'm going to double click on button set enabled, set enabled, to set the enabled state of the fruit button to false. Okay. So we're going to disable the fruit button when we click on the apple button. That's going to be the last thing it does. So let's go ahead and press finish. Again, we're going to click here and select this text and right click and select copy so we can paste that onto our orange button. We're going to press OK, double click on our orange button and press enter and then choose right click paste. Okay? And again, we have to s change this false value to true because we want our orange button to re-enable our fruit button. Okay, so go ahead and press OK and then F5. And in the resulting preview you'll see we've got all these actions stacked up now. You'll see that when we press the Apple button a variety of things happen. The first thing it's going to do is set the blue, the large blue button, the text to say Apple. Then it's going to make the purple button disappear and now additionally it's going to disable this large button. Okay, so as you can see it's set it to the disabled state. It's grayed out. It's no longer usable. And it's not clickable, but it did set the text to Apple. Now when we press orange, it's going to re-enable that button. Uh, well, rather, in order, it's going to set the text to say orange, then it's going to show the purple button, then it's going to re-enable re that button. So let's go ahead and press orange, and you can see that it worked perfectly. The button is re-enabled. Okay, and again, the purple button has its own actions. If we click on that, it sets it, it gets the text of the large button and sets its own text to that. So as you can see, we've now worked out quite a stack of actions here that are working kind of, you know, interoperably with each other so that they, they don't interfere with each other and they become uh, basically what you would refer to as context-sensitive um, types of interactions. For example, when the apple is selected, there is no purple button. So for example, if the purple button uh, was actually in the actual case a sub selector we might have under the apple area several extra buttons uh, purple buttons for macintosh apples granny smith apples and so forth whereas under the orange tab we might not have those so in other words you can add options detract from them and so forth as you use these actions okay let's go ahead and close this down i'm going to double click my apple button again and i'm going to go into the add action area and you'll see that we've got still a wide variety of uh, of actions here that we haven't experimented with. I encourage you to go through each action. Obviously, if we tried to go through each action for each object, uh, you know, we'd have to release about 15 CDs on this topic. So basically what we're trying to do is generalize and familiarize. And hopefully, if you're trying the stuff that I'm showing you along with me, I think um, it should become very apparent. For example, if you've used the uh, set visible action, it's quite easy to use the set enabled action because it's almost identical. Okay, so for the last part of our demo, let's go ahead and do something fun here. Let's add a set position action to animate one of our buttons. Okay, so I've double clicked my, here, let's back out of here. I've double clicked my Apple button again, and I'm adding it again after the other actions. Okay, and then I'm going to click add action, and I'm going to use our button set position action. So I'm going to double click that, and I'm going to choose our fruit button and what I'm going to do is in this case of course we've uh, these are variables or sorry these are values which are referring to the top left corner of the canvas our canvas is 400 pixels by 300 pixels now this is referring to the top left of our object so it's not centering the object on that value so I'm just gonna choose something arbitrary normally you would want to actually map this out quite accurately but let's choose 50 comma 50 okay and then we'll press finish then we'll press OK now if I click on our big button we can see in our properties pane here that where it's sitting is actually at 91 comma 129 right you can see that here 91 comma 129 so what I'm actually going to do is on the orange button so we'll double click your orange button we'll return it to its original position so we'll click after the last action we'll go to add action button set position okay 
and then we will go to 91, comma 129, and we're going to choose from the object name fruit. Okay? So go ahead and press finish. Go ahead and press OK, and then press F5 to preview. So now what we've done is we've added this other wrinkle where all those other actions we had stacked up, they're going to work. And in addition to that, when we click the Apple button, you'll notice that the big button goes up there and takes up the space where the purple button used to be. And we click the orange button, it comes back down. So we've actually animated that button. Now in this particular context, um, why don't we fine tune this a little bit, just for this demonstration. We know that this button here is at 91, 129, right? If we double click our Apple button, we can come in here and change our value from 50, 50 to 90, let's say 70. Okay? And then press OK. Now this will be more relevant for a real world application. When we press F5, you'll notice what happens here is um, that it, it basically serves to take up the balance for that um, the dynamic balance on the page layout for that purple button when it's taken away. So if I click on my Apple button, you'll see it, it balances the page by moving the large button up. When I click on the orange button, it balances the page by moving it down. So either way, our layout stays fairly visually relevant. Okay. So these are some examples of the button actions. Hopefully this has made you more comfortable with using the button actions and you're, you're basically familiar now with getting text from a button, setting text, setting visibility, setting the um, enabled state for a button, moving buttons around, and doing all this stuff dynamically at runtime. Now, what's also important to note here before we move on is that these actions are not exclusive to buttons in terms of triggering them. These actions can be triggered from any object in any state. So, for example, if you have a video object, you can set it to uh, trigger a button set position action on finish so that when the video clip finishing finishes playing, it automatically moves your buttons into place and things like that. It's really amazing. Y you won't believe the power of Autoplay Media Studio once you really get into it. But uh, for this tutorial here, we used buttons to trigger our, our actions. In reality, you could use any object to trigger any action for any other object so that you can create very high level interactivity between any of these objects. Okay. So suffice to say that each object has a family of actions that comes with it. They generally come in pairs that interact with each other, such as get position, set position, and get text, set text, and they can be triggered by any other action or event. Don't forget, we also have page timers and things such as that where you can arbitrarily set up cycles of events according to a timeline. So we're going to move on now to the next object. Again, this, this lesson ran a little bit long, but that was because this is the first object for which we looked at actions. As we move along here, we'll be able to pick up speed a little bit because a lot of the lessons that you learned in this tutorial will be applicable to all the objects. So let's go ahead and move on to the next object, and hopefully a lot of this stuff is becoming clear to you as we're moving along.